Hey, eighth graders, guess what? It's our last full week of school. Week 14 will only be a three day week because we're gonna end school on June 27th. So that's exciting. It's kind of crazy to think that we left each other in March and now here we are in June finishing up. Oh, but c'est la vie, such is life. All right, so we're in topic eight, lesson one. Today we are just on page 387. Let's begin. All right, a little quiz as per usual. As altitude, which is distance from sea level, rises, temperature decreases. True or false? So again, altitude is how far you are from sea level. Okay, if you're at sea level, you're at low altitude. If you're on top of a mountain, you're at high altitude. And what do you usually find on the top of a mountain? It's usually snowy. And why do you think that is? Well, because it's true. As altitude increases, temperature decreases. That's a pattern, okay? All right, so we're done with mountains. Today we're going to talk about bodies of water, ocean currents, and climate. Remember that topic eight so far is everything that can influence or affect climate. Let's talk about large bodies of water first. So remember, climate is affected by many factors. We learned about last lesson, latitude and altitude. It's also affected by distance from a large body of water, like a lake or ocean. I'm not talking about like an itty bitty pond. I'm talking about big, big, big bodies of water. So I want you to think of a location that is next to a large body of water. Like, let's talk about a beach, okay? So something interesting about water and land is that they're gonna heat up and cool down at different rates. And water is gonna heat up and cool down five times more slowly than land. So water takes a lot of energy to warm up and it also takes a long time to cool down because it takes so much energy to warm up. Water's really good at holding on to energy. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have temperature differences. I'm gonna have the air above water heat up and cool down more slowly than land over air. Okay, because again, water more slow to warm up, but also more slow to cool down. So the great news is, guys, we already know this. So if we have differences in air temperature, which we're going to have because land and water will absorb at different rates, we're going to have difference in air pressure because warm air will rise. That creates low pressure. When we have differences in pressure, that creates wind. And remember, high to low is the way wind blows. So wind is going to blow from high pressure to low pressure. You're going to get differences in pressure because of differences in temperature. So do you remember we learned about this when we learned about sea breeze and land breeze? We have air coming off the land and sea depending on how warm the land or sea is. So we're already cool with that. We already understand that if you're right next to a, a body of water, you're going to have breezes because of the differences in temperature. So let's talk about an area on the coast or called a coastal area. It's like right next to the water. So here's a picture of a coastal town in Italy. Isn't that so beautiful? I just want to like find a little restaurant and eat a pizza there. Okay, so a coastal town in Italy will experience mild winters and cool summers. And that's because of the differences in temperature. And we've got these nice breezes coming in and off the land and sea. And this is a place that you want to visit because the winters are not so cool, but the summers are not so hot. So it's like perfect temperature. But what if you're not so lucky to live on the coast of Italy? What if you live like smack in the middle of a continent? What's your climate going to be like? Well, locations in the center of the continent are too far away to be affected by large bodies of water. So they're going to experience colder winters and hotter summers because they're just too far for that, those large bodies of water to make a difference. Let's leave land, go out to sea, and start talking about marine climates. And while we're out at sea, we're going to realize that sunlight is hitting the water directly or indirectly depending on the location. For example, if we're at the equator, 
how is the sunlight going to hit? It's going to be warm at the equator, so sunlight's going to hit, do you remember? Directly. Now, if we're in the Arctic or the Antarctic at the poles, how is the sunlight going to hit? You remember? It's going to be cold, so the sunlight is hitting indirectly. This is going to create uneven heating of water, which is going to change density. For example, cold water sinks, and then it's going to create currents. Climates are affected by currents, but we already know this. For example, we spent a long time learning about the North Atlantic Drift. This is an ocean current. It starts off on the east coast of the United States as the Gulf Stream, and when it crosses the Atlantic, it becomes a North Atlantic Drift. I'm noticing that this current is red. What does that mean? Red hot. This current is a warm current, and it is going to change the climate of three countries that are located in the same latitude. So remember we learned about Russia, Canada, and England. So they're on similar lines of latitude, but England is much more rainier and Russia and Canada is much more snowy. So why? The North Atlantic Drift brings precipitation, that's a fancy word for rain, to England because it is that warmer current. So it's not gonna snow, it's going to just basically rain. And again, this is interesting because it's on the same, Russia and Canada are in the same latitude line as England, but totally different climates, and that is due to ocean currents. All right, guys, that is it for today. So let's end with a little quiz. Coastal towns experience what type of climate conditions? A, cold winters, hot summers. B, dry air. C, mild winters, cool summers, or D, similar temperatures year round? Five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna eliminate some answers. First, I'm gonna get rid of dry air because when you have a large body of water, there is moisture in the air. So we're definitely not gonna have dry air if we have wind coming off from the sea. I'm also going to get rid of similar temperatures year round. If you have a coastal town, you have land that's very close to water. We know that those, those, excuse me, land and water are going to heat up and cool down at different rates. That creates temperature differences. Um, so it's definitely not going to be the same all year round. Correct answer is ba -ba -da -ba, mild winters and cool summer summers. Again, that's why people want to visit places on the beach or places on the water. Well, A, they're beautiful, and B, you've got these really mild conditions, not too hot, not too cold, which make it like a great vacation destination. All right, guys, that is it for today. I will see you back here tomorrow and enjoy the day.